Hey guys, welcome back to part two of my making a game bot with Discord. So as I said last time, we're going to be building a tic-tac-toe game, right? So using that, we're going to learn how Discord works by building that game bot. We're going to learn about uh, embedded messages, reactions, um, waiting for a user to pass you back text, right? So let's do a little recap on what we did last time. So one, we have a bot token that we got from the Discord developer portal. Uh, it's a long string of random like letters and numbers and this is what we use to get our bot to run right this is what we call bot.run on and this is how our program knows to communicate with the discord api and we also did a little bit on events so we did a on ready event which the bot will do whenever it comes online right whenever it's ready so in this instance we have a bot.event which is an event and it will print out uh, I am alive whenever the bot comes online. So events in this case would be any like any one of the pre-made ones that Discord gave you. So um, like some examples of the event would be like on connect. So when a user connects on join, on ready, on message and command error. Like those are like different type of events, right? So on command error would be like a nice little check. So whenever if someone runs a command that doesn't exist, you can then get that information back, right? Um, the second kind we have is a command. So commands are like our pre-made little programs that we'd run and the bot knows how to run. So in this instance, um, we have a command called hello and we're passing in a context. Context in this scenario would be the bot itself, right? So the bot is sending a message a string that we give it which is called hello i am a bot so what we're doing here is that whenever the user types hello it would then prompt the bot to send a message back a string that we gave it hello i am a bot right okay so now that we went over the recap let's talk about um a command that we can actually use right all right so if you guys look at this if you guys look at this discord chat message you can see like there's a bunch of different like spam messages right when you use the bot so one useful little function that we can write is actually to like if we type in clear we then want to tell basically tell the bot to clear everything above it right so let's say we want to do clear all if we type in that function it will clear everything above it or we can do clear like five you know clear five messages above it right so that's what we're going to do today we're going to be writing a little function a little command that you can type in the chat like clear clear all that the bot can then do something okay so let's get back here so how would we take in something like clear five clear all right so the way we would take that in is that we would use a parameter so instead of just passing in ctx which is current context we would then also pass in a string right so let's test this out on our hello function so let's say we want to add a name there right so let's do name and then we have to declare what type it is first so we want it to be a type of string right so now we're taking in the context and also the string too so in python you can have a f string which means it's a formatted string so you can have um, variables right inside of it right so you can just do name and it will automatically um, print out the name for you right so now let's run this program again let's run it and see what happens and here's my um, discord and let's do hello and now since we gave it parameter we have to give it a we have to give it a second parameter right so if we just write hello it should give us an er a big error, right? So we got a messing argument error because because um, now Discord.py is expecting us to give it two arguments, but right now we're only giving it one. So now let's give it two. Hello, and now let's give it my name, Thomas, right? So now when you send this, um, we actually get back a message that is hello, and then we gave it our name. So it then it prints out our name too, right? So we can use this to our advantage. Um, so let's let's start writing the clear command, right? So let's do at bot dot command. This is telling the Python program that we we want to run a command. Now let's pass in the context, and let's assign it to true, right? So now let's make the function itself. We're gonna make a async function, and we're gonna call def, which is defining a function, right? And let's say this is clear, right? Um, and now for clear, what do we pass in? We pass in as usual the context 
and we also pass in the amount that we want to get it like the amount right and we want to get this as a string and the reason we want to get this as a string is because we want to also check if it's a clear all or a clear blank number right so let's do the clear all first um so let's do a if statement so if statements are basically conditionals where you can check if they equal to each other so let's do an if statement and we let's do if amounts which is if the amount is equal to two equal signs basically tells the if statement that you're checking if something is equivalent right if they're both the same thing and now let's check if it's equal to all right so now if amount is all so let's say in here let's say that we did clear all if all is equal to all then we would run this section of the command right so the way we would do it is that we would do await await is basically that's the thing you have to do after an async function and let's do ctx so this is calling the context or the bot itself right and now what do we want to do we want to go into the channel that we sent this message into so we would do channel ctx channel the channel that we that we sent this message into right and what do we want to do with this we want to purge it so purge is pretty interesting right because purge is the command that will get rid of everything in the chat so let's say we don't want it to just get rid of everything let's say we want to add a limiter on it right so await ctx dot channel and let's say we want to purge it also but we want to add a limit to it so we inside of purge we would then add a limit and what would that limit be it would be our amount right so we would do amount but remember we're taking it a string for the amount so before we pass in the sh uh, the amount as a um, limit we would then need to cast it so to cast something is basically to change its data type so now when you do int and you put inside the int uh, function it's basically telling python that this amount variable is no longer a string it's now a int right but remember let's see in this example in our discord chat right let's say we do clear one right what we're expecting it to do is clear this message right when we type in clear one we wanted to clear the one above it right but python will interpret this as a message and when we type clear one it will actually actually just delete this message it won't delete anything above it so we would do clear one plus one including the message that we sent it and let's try this out now and let's run it right and the bots are alive and now let's do clear two let's do clear two because we want to clear this message and this message right once we type clear two it's gone right and now let's do clear four we want to clear all these messages and we want the last message to be from the bot clear four enter and it's gone now let's test out clear all right when we're doing this we're expecting it to clear everything with no limits let's see if it works clear all and it's gone <laughs> right okay so now let's do a different message let's send a embedded message an embedded message is basically a message that is it has a little fancy styling around it right so let's make a new command bot.command and let's pass in the context of it equals to true right and now let's make a function and let's name that function by right and let's just take in ctx the context of this function so where we set the sand channel from or anything so to make an embedded message you would then call you would then you would first call discord calling discord will call the discord api and we can use those functions that discord provided to us right and in the discord function we get a embedded embedded function and inside of this embedded we can give it a title argument and in that title argument we can name it anything basically let's name it hello I'm naming. let's name it this right and now that we finish naming this we have to assign this message because this is a message right so we would do embedded 
is equal to this, right? And now let's send this message. So we would do await ctx.send like usual. And then instead of sending a string in here, we would then have to declare that this is an embedded message. So we would do embedded is equal to embedded, right? And let's run this now and see if it works. Rerun it. Make sure the bot goes online. The bot goes online now. And let's type in bye. And as you can see, it, it's a, the bot sends out a message, but it looks more fancy, right? It's it's bolded a little bit. It's a little bit bigger. It's in a side of a little um, border with it. And yeah, so now let's, so in here, right? Let's add some reactions. So how will we add these reactions, right? So um, one way to add reactions is to store the message that the bot sent out. So let's store this as message, right? And now inside of this, you can just do await. And then instead of calling CTX, which is the context that we gave it, we wanted to call um, modifiers on this message thing. And one of the things we can do is do a add reaction to this, right? And to this, we can then go and find um, like emojis that the user can then react to. Give me one second and I'll find it. Okay, so I found this pretty cool emoji with a little check mark, right? So now let's click here and let's copy this check mark. And the link to this uh, website will actually be down in the description below, right? So let's go back to PyCharm and let's type in this. So now we want it to add a reaction with this, right? And now let's rerun this and let's see our bot in action. And now let's get the bots on our line. Now let's call the buy. So now when we call buy, it should send out an embedded message, which then add a reaction to that message, right? Let's do this. And yes, you can see there, there's a reaction added. So how would you add a reaction to the message that you sent? So let's say now um, you want the bot to react to your message so, so that you know it went through and it did something, right? So what you can do is actually do await ctx dot uh, message dot add underscore reaction. And you would use the same format and give it a little string with that thing there, right? And then whenever you run this, and now when you rerun this, and now when you rerun this, you can then go back to Discord and let's do buy. So now as you can see, the bot added a little reaction mark to us, to our message, letting us know that we that the command has been fulfilled, right? So this is a useful way to give the user some input that their command has been filled, right? So yeah, that's basically it for today. We went over embedded message, we went over reactions, and we went over um, uh, adding different parameters to it, right? Um, so I feel this this little command will be really useful for admins, right? You want to restrict this for admins. So I'll go over restricting and um, restricting access, roles, and stuff like that in the future. All right, that's it for today. Bye bye.